Welcome to the Movement Upgraded Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jen Hostler, licensed physical therapist and certified strength and mobility coach. Here you can expect to hear about all things movement. The Movement Upgraded Podcast is a blend of the science of strength training, rehab, and mobility mixed with the personal and professional experience to provide you with the steps you need to keep your body pain-free and moving well so you can do what you love forever. Welcome back to the Movement Upgraded Podcast. This is episode number nine, which is so cool. I have been getting into a lot more of the science in the past several episodes, so I wanted to pull back a little bit and talk about kind of habits again. And you're probably going to hear a lot about this, but that's because everything boils down to making sure we are consistently putting small efforts towards things, whether that is like just being habitual with our exercise guidelines a few times a week, or if that's cars on a daily basis or whatever habit it is that you're trying to work on to basically just take care of your body. And this episode was sparked from me realizing the other day, I believe it was last week as I was getting ready to go for a walk, I was putting on my shoes and I went to reach for, I have Let's backtrack real quick. I have um, a handful of shoes that I wear for walking. The majority of them are all Vivo barefoot shoes. That might be a different story for a different day on why I love them, but they are all like very minimalist type of shoes. They have zero heel drop. They're a wide toe box. I love them, but I've also worked into those over the past like decade. So I have three pairs. One pair, they're my Primus Light shoes. I love them. They're white. They're well loved because they are my most worn shoe. And I realized I have two other pairs of shoes that I don't wear as often, mostly because they take me longer to get my foot into them because I have to wear those shoes tighter. I have to tie them tight because of the way the shoe is for them to feel comfortable for me, which means that when I go to try to put them on, I have to loosen them up and not just untie them, loosen them all the way up. So there's just like a little extra step and I just don't do it. And that is because our brains are always going to take the path of least resistance. We are always going to, when we are not intentional about something um, or have not formed a habit where it is not something, um, like a habit is going to be something that doesn't really require our mental effort. It just is habitual. Um, When that is going to be the case, we are just going to trend towards the easier thing. And this is something that I have really paid attention to and I see all over now that I've worked in understanding these concepts is just how much of our lives we spend in like a reactive mode. And I mean reactive as in life is happening and a lot of us are not proactive about paying attention and setting our lives up for certain things. And time goes by and we um, don't exercise or we don't take care of our joints and we don't realize that as time goes by, if we are not intentional, we are always taking the path of least resistance and life is always getting a little bit more hectic or crazy. And when we aren't intentional about things, the opposite of what we would like typically, so health, for example, is what's going to happen. So we trend towards a life that is a little bit less healthy, um, or we trend towards a life that is a little bit more messy. And this is something that applies to basically every aspect of our lives, which is why I wanted to talk about it today. But it's definitely one that applies to our ability to stay consistent with our movement habits, which is, again, why we're talking about it today. So I will kind of pull everything back in away from my like philosophical deep thoughts and get you back into how does this relate to like movement because that is ultimately our goal, but it really applies to everything. So I wanted to talk basically about how we are operating off of limited willpower and motivation. And motivation is great when it's here, but you know, it's fleeting. It doesn't always show up. And what happens when you're not motivated to do something and you have to fall back on your habits and your systems you've created. And if you haven't been intentional about creating those, then you won't have anything to fall back on. So you're probably not going to be consistent or you're probably not going to make choices that are conducive to the life that you would like to intentionally design or reach towards your goals. And when we operate off of limited willpower, 
the same thing happens when we have to constantly rely on our willpower, which by the way, willpower is literally just the amount of control or effort exerted to either do something we want to do or not do something that we don't want to do, which comes down to habits, whether or not it's a habit you're trying to accomplish or a habit you're trying to get rid of, the more willpower you're going to have to rely on for those things, the less likely you're going to be able to sustain something in the long run. And this is something I didn't understand about willpower when I was younger. I I looked at people who are into fitness and um, so quote unquote disciplined, and I thought they just had all of this willpower, but it turns out they don't necessarily have willpower. They are really good about just designing their lives and setting them up so they don't have to rely on willpower as often. And that's what I want to help you do today. So The first thing we need to understand is that life is just constantly pulling you in different directions and we have to be more proactive if we have goals or we have a certain way that we would like our lives to go. And it's really important to one, understand what those goals are. That's why I have episode number one, all about goal setting. If you haven't listened to that, I highly recommend it, but you need to understand where your arrow is pointed. So you have to have an idea of what you want your life to look like. What are your goals? What are your values? What things are you working towards? And then it's important to be proactive about those things. If you want to uh, have good mobility, you can't just say you want to have good mobility and expect it to happen. We are going to have to set things in stone and have regular habits and basically assume the identity of somebody who has good mobility, which means you're going to have to work on those every day, which starts with daily cars. Um, So that's what I want you to think about. You have to make, you're going to have to make choices and be intentional about your life if you have some, some way that you want your life to look like, just like the examples that I talked about. And Again, if it comes to mobility, it comes down to daily movements. It comes down to um, our habits. It comes down to sometimes being a little bit more intentional about our movement throughout the day. And like I said before, our life is constantly taking the path of least resistance. If you aren't being intentional about it, the life or wind will just kind of blow you around wherever it's going to take you. And that's not necessarily going to be where you want to go. And Uh, One of the concepts to understand about this is the idea of entropy, which I've talked about a little bit um, on Instagram, and I want to talk about that here. And the idea of entropy really is that it's like a physics term, and I love it so much. There's a whole blog about it that I'll link in the show notes here. But the idea of entropy is that all things in life over time are trending towards disorder or chaos. And This is so true for every part of our life, whether that is just like your house. If you think about living in your house on a daily basis, you're going around and just living your life, your house gets dirty, right? Blankets get taken off the couch and utilized and dust accumulates and dirt happens and mirrors get dirty. And so we have to put effort and energy into cleaning on a regular basis to maintain some sort of cleanliness. And when we don't do regular consistent cl- like things to clean, like if we're not regularly vacuuming or picking and tidying up every night, Then all of a sudden, like once a month hits and you have to do all of it at once. It's the same amount of energy, but if you're doing small little things over time, you might have a less resistance towards like needing to clean, do a deep clean in your house because you're already consistently doing it. The same thing happens with movement and health. So if we think about over time, as we age, we get less healthy. We get less strong, we lose muscle mass, which is actually not a good thing. Our bones get less dense. All of those things happen. We get less flexible, we lose ranges of motion. All of those happen if we're not putting forth energy to combat it. So because of entropy, you are getting less mobile, you are getting less healthy, you're getting weaker. But with exercise, just like with small efforts of cleaning, you can combat a lot of it. And What I've seen in the past in older generations that I've been around is this tendency to just assume that because you're getting older, life sucks as you get older and, um, and everything gets harder as you get older. And I'm not going to deny those lived existences because I have not, I'm, I'm still young, relatively speaking, but I will say that if you are not actively working on exercise, it's definitely going to be way harder than if you were working towards exercise and movement and maintaining those things. So when it comes to making sure that we are, again, 
working towards a goal, we are definitely not going to reach that goal if we are not intentional about habits and designing our lives in a way that is conducive towards said goal. Entropy is one of the big things, one of the big reasons that we have to put effort towards the things that we want to achieve. Now, the hard part is understanding that doesn't mean it's constant effort and willpower and you're just constantly having to make these decisions and it's really hard. That is usually true up front, but we really need to understand that willpower is a fixed amount. We all have a limited amount of it. You can't utilize it all the time. It's exhausting. And the amount of willpower we have is literally going to be how many decisions we have to make on a regular basis. And the more decisions you have to make, the more things and tasks you have to do, honestly, the less you're going to be able to leverage your willpower. And so there's a couple ways we can basically leverage our willpower or set ourselves up so that we don't have to utilize it on a regular basis. And one of those things has to do with unburdening your future self. So if you're somebody who feels like they're super overwhelmed all the time, you try to start a fitness routine, but it just feels like this huge task, um, or you're trying to work on cars or everything just seems like it's just, there's so much going on. You likely are putting things off on a regular basis and burdening your future self and just saying, I'll take care of this later. And that definitely will overwhelm you, especially if those things that you're putting off can take like less than 30 seconds. And this is something I used to do on a regular basis. I would just be like, no, I'll get it later. And I realized like, what if you just like accomplish that right now? Like it's really not that complicated. Just just do it right now. And that's a skill that I actually learned ever since I uh, married Ryan um, and have been with him for the past 12 years. He's really good at it and I was not. Um, and I've gotten a lot better at it now because I just didn't realize it was something I needed to focus on, which is why we're having this podcast episode. So it's really important to understand how to unburden your future self. Now, does this mean you need to constantly be worried about, oh my gosh, I need to do everything right now? No, but it's getting to know yourself and getting to understand that maybe not everything needs to be done later and there are certain things you can do to set yourself up for your future self. And when it comes to exercise, one of the ways you can do this is just having your workouts planned and scheduled in like an appointment. That way you're not going about the week trying to figure out when you're going to quote unquote make time because you won't. It's Life is just hectic and chaotic and there's just no way that you're going to randomly magically find some time for exercise. It has to be something that you put in your schedule just like you put in your kid's or your, your own doctor's appointments. Like they, it just needs to be scheduled in for the week. And that's like the first thing that most people struggle with. It's, okay, well, I, do, I have to find time for exercise. Well, yes, you do have to find time for it and make time for it in the very beginning. The other thing is making sure that you already have your workouts figured out. So I usually personally am biased towards strength training. And so I'll have my strength training program written out for the month. And I follow that for four to six weeks and I don't have to worry about it for those four to six weeks. And it's amazing. And that is something that is going to unburden your future self because you don't have to figure out what your workouts are. You just have to show up and it's still the same amount of energy because I still put the effort in up front. But again, it's just putting the effort up front. Um, one of the other things you can think about is things like cars. If you are constantly like, I have to get my cars and I have to get my cars in all day long, that's really kind of exhausting. But if you just do them in the very beginning of the day, when you have a moment, you'll unburden your future self the rest of the day and that's already out of your head and you're going to feel less overwhelmed. So those are just like small things where we are doing things now to unburden our future selves. And I personally do this also with meals because trying to figure out what's for dinner is another decision for me to make. So in, on, um, usually on like Saturdays or Sundays, but sometimes in the middle of the week, whenever it runs out, I have a sticky notepad on the side of my fridge and I have a general idea of what the meals are for the week. And I make this before I go grocery shopping for the week or for the, for the next two weeks. And this helps because one, 
I do not have to then figure out what's for dinner every single night because that's exhausting. And two, I don't have to be the person to tell Ryan, hey, this is what we're having for dinner because he will often, we switch on who makes meals. And it's so much help for me because I like to have different meals regularly. Ryan could probably eat the same thing every day. So because I prefer to have a variety, I just put it all up front, do the work, and then I don't have to think about it for the week. The same thing for my clothes. So I don't have a uniform that I wear. I kind of do essentially, but if I'm having a particularly busy week, I will pick out my outfits um, for the week, which are all workout clothes, but it's still just one less decision I have to make and I will do that all on like a Sunday. And so these are ways to kind of reduce the overwhelm that you're going to feel. So if there's something that you know on a regular basis that you have to make a decision about, what ways can you unburden your future self by figuring that out early in advance so that you don't have to think about it and you can focus on just the few things that you need to do that day. Those are just a few examples, but they seem small, but the small things add up. And again, every single day we have limited willpower. So if you can just rely less on willpower, less on your decision making on a day-to-day basis and more on, oh, I already did that for myself. That's great. Um, And ultimately, exercise is the ultimate unburdening of your future self, if you think about it, because you're working to make sure that you decrease how hard something is later in your life. That is literally what I think about every time I go to work out. I'm like, this is going to be hard, but I'm choosing my hard now so that in the future I can experience a little less hard, hopefully, right? Like I will put in the hopefully word because we never know what things are going to happen in the future, but I can guarantee you I will be more prepared in the future. Um, when I am consistently exercising and taking care of my mobility and strength and cardio respiratory fitness. Now, if I'm doing that now, then things will be a little bit easier in the future because I will be more physically fit. I will be more prepared for whatever life throws my way. And so ultimately that is kind of what unburdening your future self is. The other thing that I wanted to cover on how to kind of leverage your willpower and help you stay more consistent is lowering the barrier of entry. And this is something that I love explaining and helping people realize because we sometimes just feel like there's so much resistance between us and doing the thing. And a barrier is literally that. It's there's the the thing you want to do on the other side of the barrier, whether that is get a workout in or get your cars in, whatever that is, it's the thing you want to do. And the barrier is the amount of steps or the amount of effort you have to put forth to accomplish that thing. Unburdening your future self is literally slowly trying to remove a barrier earlier on so that there's less steps or less resistance to doing them, less physical effort required or mental effort required. So then you're just, it's a little bit easier to get things done. And there's a couple different ways about that you can go about lowering the barrier of entry when it comes to fitness. Um, If you think about all the steps, that's usually how I explain that to people, between you and doing the thing you wanna do. Um, when it comes to the gym, you have to find the time, which almost is the barrier that n- makes nobody get their workouts in. We have to change our clothes. Usually we have to get fitness clothes on. We have to drive to the place and then we have to figure out our workout and then we actually have to do the thing, right? So there's a lot of steps in there that you can accomplish or decide not to accomplish because it just seems too much. And sometimes when life is hard or your willpower is being Uh, taken up by other things, the gym can feel like it's difficult. And instead of lowering the barrier of entry, we just give up all together. And one of the ways to stay consistent when life gets lifey is for us to just lower the barrier of entry. Maybe we don't need to drive to the gym and we just need to get some sort of movement in at home. So you're still doing something, but you are lowering the barrier of entry. Or maybe we have Um, maybe you work out at home regularly and the idea of changing your clothes is just like way too much for you. Like there's no law that says you need to wear workout clothes that are this perfect matching set to get your workout in. You could do something at home. Um, when it comes to cars, maybe you like to have your cars done and you think you need to carve out this like meditative area and you need to sit down and you need to do all these things and you need to have 10 minutes of breath work and it needs to be like on this yoga mat. But like, In all honesty, a lot of the cars that I do and majority of my people do are not this beautiful, like 
cars routine. It's a few cars here and there throughout the day and eventually you get through all of them just because you got through them. Or um, it's okay, I have like 10 minutes, let me just like get a quick express version of cars so that like eight days don't go by and you didn't get any cars in. So in different ways, you can lower the barrier of entry. Maybe that's make your workouts less long. Maybe that is make your uh, just reduce the steps between you and doing the thing. Something else that can be included in lowering the barrier of entry is lowering your expectations. Sometimes we have these expectations placed on ourselves for a workout or for the thing we're trying to do that are just very unrealistic. And this is something that has happened a lot in the office when I work with people because I teach a lot of women how to strength train because majority of well, one, that's something that we need to do for our health. And it's like the the smallest thing, not smallest, but it's one of the big things that we can do for reducing injuries. And it's a personal goal of mine to help women learn that. And a lot of women come to my office wanting to learn that. They just don't know how. Um, so that's like why people come to me a lot. So when I'm working with them, they will say, well, um, you know, I just, I need to get into lifting. I want to learn how to do it. I know it'll help me, blah, blah, blah. And I will tell them, okay, we're going to start with twice a week. You're going to come in here once with me. And then I'm going to have you do one other uh, day on your own once you feel comfortable. And twice a week is your goal for the next like several months. And they're like, what? And they're like twice a week. I thought I needed to be in the gym like five to six days a week. And I said, I will normally look at them and say like, no, you don't have to be in the gym five to six days a week. Yes, we need to move six to seven days a week, some way, shape or form. A lot of that movement can be walking and your general exercise can be walking, it can be playing, it can be anything that's counting as physical activity and getting your heart rate up. When it comes to lifting and like very specific exercises, you really only need to do lifting twice a week um, for the bare minimum guidelines. And they're always so surprised and that has been a big barrier of entry for them to be able to do the thing. And so once we lower the expectations, they're like, oh yeah, I can do this and it's great. Same thing with the amount of time. We think we need to spend an hour and a half um, or over an hour, whatever it is in the gym, and you can get a solid strength training session in 30 to 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I've done strength training sessions in 20 minutes or less where I didn't have a lot of time, but that was all that I had. And that was enough because that is way better than skipping it all together for months on end. So when it comes to cars as well, a lot of my clients will be like, well, I just, you know, like I don't, I don't feel comfortable or I feel like it's just an added barrier for me to get on the ground, have to do all my cars. Like it, just in, in their head, they create this big thing, which is their expectations of it. And I'll tell them, I mean, nobody said you had to do all your cars at once. Nobody said you need to get on the ground. You literally, there are no rules. Just do two to three repetitions at every joint every day. So uh, a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't realize I could just do my wrist cars while I'm sitting here listening to this podcast, or I can do neck cars and hip cars while I'm waiting for my food to cook in the kitchen, or I can get my ankle cars done while I'm sitting in a waiting room. Like there are so many ways that you can get them done and you can break them up however you need. It doesn't matter. Your body has no idea if you're doing them all at once. It literally just knows that you are moving and reminding it that you want all these ranges of motion. So what if you just lowered your expectations? What if you didn't have to have this perfect workout every single time? Um, and what if you just needed to adjust your mindset when it comes to workouts? That is a big part of reducing the barrier of entry. Last but not least, one of the things that I wanted to cover today is the idea of trying to accomplish everything at once. And this is one of the other big barriers to actually like living a life by design and feeling um, either living a life proactively and trying to work towards a goal or just kind of letting life take you where it goes and feeling overwhelmed all the time and not feeling like you can accomplish anything. And this is usually um, what I feel like happens to a lot of people and is that we're just trying to accomplish too many things at once. And so if you feel like you're struggling with uh, staying consistent and getting something accomplished that you want, you may just be trying to do too many things at once. It's it's very hard when you start a new task. And I told you that up front, we're, we're operating off of limited willpower. And so if you are starting a new habit, you are going to require more willpower. It's gonna take more effort up front. And if you look at somebody else who's been doing something that you are working on for years and years and years, you're gonna be like, oh, it's so easy for them um, because it is. But that's because they earned the easy. Easy's earned. And once you have the reps in, um, your reps start to 
I don't want to say they're worth more, but you start to get more return on investment for the same amount of time put in. But you have to get all of those reps up front. So when it comes to making sure that you are working on something, it's going to take a lot of willpower up front. And so if you're trying to do too many new things at once, that's a lot of willpower and you're going to burn out and it's just not going to be sustainable. So you really need to get very specific on the one to two things you want to work on for a few months and only do those. This is something that I work on very specifically with people that I work with um, because they'll come in for any sort of pain or issue um, in their bodies. And most of the time we have to just start with cars because they're not even working on maintaining the ranges of motion that they have. And so we'll do cars and maybe like one or two additional exercises, but the idea of a daily movement routine is new for most people. And so I can't expect them to do a ton of new things and change everything at once. Um, and they can't expect that of themselves either. So make sure that you are being very specific and not trying to do too much at once. Um, and also, are you just trying to do too many things that you think are helpful, but in reality, they're not? So one of the concepts that I love, um, and it's in essentialism, I've heard it before, is Pareto's principle, which is the idea that 80% of the results that we get from the things that we do are from 20% of the effort that we put forth. And we talk about these as the big dial movers in um, fitness or in mobility. I talk about that or in rehab. And sometimes we're trying to do too many things and we're trying to do too many small things that don't add up as much versus doing bigger things that are fewer and that have a better ROI for your time. An example of this for mobility is something like foam rolling. A lot of people love foam rolling. I don't hate it. I just don't. It, it's not going to provide you any long-term results. It does have a little parasympathetic effect, so it does feel good. But when we are operating off of limited time and limited ability to accomplish things, foam rolling is just not going to give you a lot of return on investment. So if you are somebody who comes in and you're like, I'm doing all of these things, a lot of my, sometimes a lot of my uh, goal or the the focus of what I work on with my clients or patients is actually like coaching to make sure that they are reducing all of the extra noise on social media and consuming a lot of content. It can feel like, oh, I need to do this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. And we see so many things, we save so many exercises and we get so stressed um, that we need to be doing all these things. And Sometimes it's hard for me as a clinician or a coach to work on this with people, but I will really have to hone them in and be like, hey, you're trying to do too many things at once. We need to pick one thing at a time because it's a lot of effort to change your body and how your body is functioning. And we just need to make sure that we are focusing on one thing at a time and making sure that we reduce how much effort we're putting in all of the other areas and see if we can figure out what are the small things that we can do that are really the big things providing us with the majority of our efforts. So make sure that you are trying to hone in on what's important to you. This is also something to note that you or I would say a majority of people that I work with who feel overwhelmed are not good at saying no to other people. And I would just like to remind you that if you are not very steadfast in who you are, what your values are, and what your goals are. When people ask you to do something, you're always going to trend towards whatever they want you to do. And that's not going to end up in you living a life that you want. You're going to feel really overwhelmed and you're going to feel burnt out or stressed or frustrated that you're not accomplishing the things that you want. And in our tendency, it might be to take the victim mindset of blaming other people for things instead of realizing, wow, I could just say no, or I just need to be very steadfast in the things that are important to me. That's not always possible. I realize that, but it might be more possible than you realize. So um, if you are somebody who feels really overwhelmed, again, we just need to be very specific in making sure that we are not focusing on too many things at once. We need to reduce the noise and make sure that we are just picking the few things and doing those really well. So that's like some of the laws of essentialism. I love that book. If you haven't read it, I recommend checking it out. And also make sure that you are prioritizing what's important to you because if you don't, your other people will prioritize your life for you. And that will not be 
you living a life that you want. So back to the shoe example, um, some of the ways that I can get myself to wear the other shoes so that I can wear shoes that I have, right? And also not overwear the shoes, the other shoes that I love is to make sure that I am lowering the barrier of entry for wearing the shoes. So every time I wear them, I need to make sure that I untie them and loosen them up so that I don't have to worry about that when I am going to make that decision, right? Because a lot of the time when I'm going to put on my shoes for a walk, I'm not thinking about which shoes to wear. Again, this sounds really small, but these things add up. The other thing that I can do and I have done in the past is put the shoes away that I don't want to wear as often and make it harder for me to wear those shoes so that I have to do an added step of going and finding them. So those are like, obviously, again, this is shoes. It's not that big of a deal, but these are perfect examples that you can utilize and think about in your own life for like habits that you're trying to create to work towards a goal that you are working towards accomplishing. So those are the two ways that I could unburden my future self with making myself do those shoes. Hopefully that was a little bit of of a little helpful for you when it comes to maybe being super overwhelmed with movement, mobility, or health, or whatever goal that you're working towards. And maybe that gave you some ideas on, oh, I realize that I'm just having to rely on willpower all the time. I have no systems in place. I have no habits. So let's work on one or two of those at a time and not try to change and overhaul our entire lives all at once because it will not work. We will not stay consistent. Um, So what I want you to do from this podcast, what I want you to get out of that is is I want you to think about your current life and I want you to one, make sure that you understand like what your goals are, like what things are you working towards right now? What are, what things are very important to you? And are you putting effort on a regular basis towards those to make sure you're unburdening your future self so that you can accomplish those things? Um, are there ways that you can lower the barrier of entry? If there is something you're working towards that uh, doing on a regular basis, but you're struggling with staying consistent with it, can you make it easier to get that check mark and accomplish that thing. Um, And is there something that you can do now or on a regular basis up front, maybe on a weekly basis or monthly basis that helps you not feel like you are scrambling when it comes time to actually execute said habit? Those are just a couple things to think about. Also remember that anytime you're doing a new skill or a new habit, it's harder up front and it will get easier. And all of what I'm talking about today is a, they're just life skills and they just take reps and small little tweaks at a time. But the important thing is, is to make sure that we are not trying to overhaul everything at once. So to wrap things up, we are all operating off of limited willpower and fleeting motivation that cannot be relied upon when we are trying to live lives that we want to live and create lives that are conducive to our values and our goals. So we have to Make sure that we are combating these things by lowering the barrier of entry for accomplishing the things we want to accomplish and unburdening our future self and not putting things off all the time so we have less decisions to make on a regular basis so that we can actually make the decisions we need to and stay consistent with the things that we want to do. So hopefully this was helpful in sparking some ideas for you if it did have you like realized something, any little light bulb moments, I would love to hear it. I love hearing feedback from the podcast. It's always great to hear from you guys. And if there's anything you like to hear about or would like to hear more about, um, please feel free to message me on Instagram or send me an email. I love hearing about it. Um, but I hope that you take a few minutes to reflect after this podcast and think about the things that I talked about. And with that being said, I will um, talk to you in episode number 10. 